Now, Prince Henry, before he died, also started a school for explorers in Portugal. He funded the school, he organized the curriculum, and it was very, very important for those early explorers because there really was no official school where explorers could learn their craft. Prince Henry, the navigator of Portugal, you see him here and members of that school students are making maps and talking about navigation. Here are some of the graduates of Prince Henry the Navigator's school. One of them explored the coast of West Africa. Bartholomew Diaz was the first to reach the tip of Africa in the south. Vasco da Gama, an important Portuguese man, discovered a sea route to Asia. We'll talk about him in a minute. And Pedro Cabral, and Pedro Cabral, he discovered Brazil in South America. Gil Ines, he brought the first boatload of 200 slaves to Portugal in a move some might consider. And Gil Ines, he brought the first boatload of 200 slaves to Portugal. I just mentioned Vasco da Gama. Well, here he is in all of his sailing glory. He sailed for Portugal. He was a member of the school of Prince Henry's and he sailed 27,000 miles for 10 months from Portugal to India with four ships. And he reached India in 1498. Let's look at the lower left-hand corner here and look more closely at da Gama's voyage. He left Lisbon, Portugal, and he and his men go around Africa, around the Cape of Good Hope, and stop in eastern coast cities in Africa, and eventually reach the city of Calcutt in India. And this marks Europe's first direct maritime route to Asia. And after da Gama gets back, and shares his stories, it starts a scramble to set up Asian trade posts. He proves maritime trade with Asia is possible. Christopher Columbus, he is born in Italy, but he is hired by Spain. The Spanish monarchs, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, finance his voyage in 1492. And in that voyage, he reaches islands in the Caribbean Sea, but he thinks he reaches the East Indies in Asia. He actually lives his whole life thinking he has reached Asia, not knowing he's discovered a new world but not a direct sea route to Asia. Christopher Columbus's journeys fueled the Spanish-Portuguese overseas competition. Once the Portuguese see Columbus bringing all these riches to Spain, they want a piece of that glory, and competition ensues. Here are the four voyages of Christopher Columbus. You see, he did not go to India or Asia, but instead sailed around Cuba and Jamaica and the Bahamas. And this area is now Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So he sailed all around the Caribbean and one of his voyages took him to South America as well. Ferdinand Magellan, another man who sailed for Spain. Magellan was born in Portugal, but he led a Spanish expedition that was the first to circumnavigate or travel around the earth. That's his accomplishment to navigation. However, he didn't make it all the way around the world. He died in the Philippines in Asia, defending a Christian tribe he befriended against its enemy. He got caught up in a civil war in the Philippines. So, in 1522, one ship with 18 men returned home to Spain. Now, the journey had started in 1519 with 237 men aboard. So, it's successful, but 
there was a large price to pay for the first circumnavigation. Let's look at Magellan's route. He starts in Spain, and this dark red route shows you that he goes around South America. He hits spots along the eastern coast and then travels further west along the Pacific Ocean and then hits Southeast Asia. And this square shows us a zoomed in area of where he dies. This cross shows you where Magellan dies. 16 months after Magellan dies, his crew finishes the job. They go into the Indian Ocean, they sail around Africa and the Cape of Good Hope and return to Spain victorious. Spain also hires conquerors. They're called the Spanish conquistadors. King Ferdinand of Spain wanted to build a larger empire than Portugal because Portugal was empire building in Asia. So King Ferdinand of Spain hires two captains to lead expeditions in North and South America. Here are these two captains. First, Hernando Cortez. He leads an expedition in Mexico. Next, Francisco Pizarro. He leads an exposition. He leads an expedition to Peru on the west coast of South America. First, Cortez encounters indigenous natives in Mexico, the Aztecs. He claims central Mexico for Spain, but then he learns of the wealth of this local Aztec empire. Cortez and his men meet with the Aztec emperor, Montezuma, who thinks that Cortez is a god the first time they meet. And I'm going to focus now on this painting that shows the first meeting between Cortez and Montezuma. So Montezuma gives Cortez a large supply of the gold that the empire has. Cortez and his men later take Montezuma hostage after Cortez learns that the Aztecs have attacked the Spanish. Now, there's misunderstanding. Who started this violence? Was it the Aztec or was it Cortez's men? That is left up to the judges of history. We do know that many of the Aztecs die of smallpox and measles because these are diseases they have no immunity for. Their bodies have never encountered it before. So they are weakened and the Aztec empire is weakened. So in 1521, Cortez and his men take over the Aztec empire in Mexico. The second Spanish conquistador, Francisco Pizarro, he encounters the Inca empire, people who are indigenous to the western part of South America. I'm going to move us to this map of South America. You see the lighter orange region? That is where the Inca empire lives. And in 1532, in Peru, Pizarro and a 200-man army meet the Incan ruler, Ata, Atahualpa, and they meet in And Adahualpa brings an unarmed force of thousands. Many more men with no weapons. Pizarro's men end up ambushing the Incans. They then kidnap and kill Atahualpa. And this painting shows you the kidnapping of Atahualpa by Pizarro's men. In 1533, Pizarro and his men capture the Incan capital, without a fight. And there is the Incan capital of Cuzco. Next, we travel to England to talk about its most famous explorer, Sir Francis Drake. Sir Francis Drake is a hero to the English. He is an enemy and a pirate to the Spanish. Why? Because